Welcome to day 11 of the 30 plus day get up and go challenge. Number six, February, 2021. We are doing the sixth time we've done, or I've done with other people. Maybe you have been here before, maybe you haven't. The get up and go challenge. And today we're gonna talk about the framework, the soap framework. We're gonna get some soap and we are gonna use some soap over the remainder of the challenge. Why? Because we wanna make sure we take this soap framework and just like we want to clean our hands really, really well and wear our masks and everything during the pandemic, we want to make sure that this framework becomes automatic in our life. We want to do it enough times that we actually put it into our subconscious so whenever a change or a challenge or a setback or a problem or a situation we hadn't anticipated pops up in our life, we automatically handle it in a way that is best for us. So where the heck did this soap framework come from? Why is it the soap framework? I'm going to get comfy today. Why did... Uh, and where did it come from? Well, just like we've done over the last couple of days, when the pandemic hit last spring, pretty we're coming up on a year now, I had already had my whole year planned out. I knew what I was gonna do, I knew what my goals were, I knew what my objectives were. And unlike a lot of people, I was already in the online world. So a lot of what I had planned to do and was going to do didn't have to change dramatically, but everyone around me and everything around me was changing dramatically. My daughter lost her job. My uh, granddaughter was not able to go to daycare anymore or to, she was, uh, she started kindergarten in the fall, but they weren't sure whether school would even be open or not. So was, and her mom was working. So was I gonna homeschool her or how were you gonna work that? So all kinds of things that hadn't been taken into consideration as I planned out 2020 needed to change. And so I went through the process just like we've gone through through the last two days is, I looked at my initial response and how I was handling what was happening around me and what was happening then to me directly or how I needed to, to behave about it. And I realized, well, I've got a pretty good change process and a challenge process and I've been using it for a long time, but I've never described it or shared it or uh, thought, I've never thought consciously about it. I mean, I've done work on different aspects of change and challenge and I've done lots and lots of challenges in my life, but I never thought, well, what is my process for doing it. So I sat down and I just wrote out my process, just like I had you do two days ago. What do you do? How do you respond when you immediately are faced with a change? And I realized that some of the ways I automatically respond aren't that good, right? Sometimes I play the victim. Sometimes I hide. Sometimes I ignore. Sometimes I pretend that the, the change doesn't have to affect me when it really, really does affect me. Uh, you know, I've done that with a lot of changes and a lot of challenges in my life where I thought, okay, I can just put this off and put this off and put this off forever. I think of my divorce. I think it took me like, I, it was at least five years to actually get my divorce. You know, we'd been separated and been gone, gone our separate ways for at least five years before we went to the attorney and, and finalized the, the assets and everything. Why? Because it was super duper complicated and we had a lot of businesses together. We had a family together and everything. And it was like me avoiding just getting it done, cutting the ties. And so it was kind of a waste of five years where it wasn't a huge priority, obviously, or I would have had it done. But I think back and I'm like, well, what could I have done in those five years had I not dragged my feet on this particular change or challenge? And so as like everyone else, as I was going into the COVID-19 pandemic and the time frame of how long it was going to last and how it was going to impact us began to mushroom and explode, I realized I had to figure out what I was going to do about it. How was I going to respond? Now, I'd already been doing challenges. I had different plans and projects uh, that I wanted to do during the year, and I did all those, but I also decided I needed to do something to keep me moving every single day. I had to have something, some reason, some purpose to help myself and other people get up and go and just keep moving toward my goals and objectives, the things that I wanted every, you know, before the pandemic. Pandemic had a tendency for the vast majority of people to just stop them dead in their tracks and then just instance by instance, thing by thing that came up, they would have to react and respond to it and figure out how they were going to deal with it and handle it. And that's, I don't think it was the first time through the get up and go challenge even that I came up with the soap framework. Maybe that probably was even I did a five day challenge right off the bat, how to get anything you want and how to keep moving forward 
during changing and challenging times. And that, I realized, five days was not enough to cover even the tip of the iceberg on anything that could help people. And I wanted to make sure I was giving really good value and helping, or why bother doing it? So I decided to expand it to a 30-day challenge, and then I was challenged by a group of entrepreneurs to do a 40-day challenge in June into July. So I made it a 40-day challenge, and then I did it again every other month through the end of the year, and I thought, I didn't do it in January, and I'm kicking myself because I noticed a huge difference in my energy, my motivation level, my desire to move forward toward my goals and objectives, which is usually never a problem for me, but there's so much negativity and so much nonsense going on in the world that it was negatively impacting me. And so February 1st, we jumped right back on the bandwagon. And I said, all right, we're doing another get up and go challenge. Why? Because it works. It helps to remind me, just like everybody else, that I have control over my life. I have the ability to decide and choose how I'm going to respond to anything and everything that happens around me. And I get to create everything that happens within me. So get up and go challenge the SOAP framework. I, I did what we did the other day. I brainstormed what are the main steps that I go through on a, and, and for me, it's been subconscious for a really long time. What are those steps I go through on a subconscious level that I can use and, and share my framework because we all have a framework, we all have a way we do things, a process or a system. We just might not know it on a conscious level. And that I was the same for me. I had never really sat down and said, okay, step one, step two, step three, step four, how do I deal with challenges and changes? And then I did it for different types of challenges and changes because I really wanted to understand my process and the framework that I use to, to go through changes and challenges and I realized that it all starts out with what is the situation what's the story I'm telling myself what is the story of what's going on all right a pandemic hit I now am in charge of my four-year-old granddaughter five days a week from like 6 30 7 a.m. until maybe five to six or seven o'clock at night so all the plans I had for myself for being you know having free days all day through the months that originally it was going to be 10 days then it was going to be a month and a half then it was going to be two months then it was three months then it was you know all the way through we're still in many areas under covid restrictions and covid uh related guidelines and and requirements so uh lucky for my granddaughter because she's loving it she is able to go to kindergarten of course they wear their little fast face masks all day except for recess and uh, they're, they're getting by. They're figuring it out. We're all figuring it out together, hopefully together. Uh, so the first thing was, what's the situation? What's the story? I need to know what I'm dealing with so I, I can figure out what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to respond. And what's the second step? Well, here's the story. Here's the situation. And I'll show you as we go throughout the challenge, different tools for each of these framework components to identify and figure out quickly and easily ways of looking at the story, looking at the situation so you don't miss anything. Because I will be honest, when I when I went through it the first time, I didn't do a good job of analyzing all the aspects of the situation, mainly because they were unknown, right? And they're changing all the time. But our life is always changing. So then what's the, what's the next thing I do? Okay, I know the story, I know the situation. Well, what's possible? What are my options? What can I possibly do? What are my choices? What are possible solutions? What are what do I need to do? What could I do? What could I what resources might I need to bring in? Who might I need to ask for help to handle this situation? So the Owen soap, let me grab my soap. I was gonna do my soap. I forgot to do my soap backwards. This is actually my original bar of soap for the soap framework. And then I wrapped some up for Christmas as a joke for my kids. But uh, that's why they don't say soap backwards so that you can see it right way. I I've got one more that's wrapped, so maybe I'll try to write backwards on it. So when I show my bar of soap, it looks like it's going in the right direction. Thank you, Android, for not making that flipping possible yet. Uh, so the O stands for options. What else is possible? And oftentimes, and I'll talk about this a lot over the next few days, oftentimes when we think about options, when we're faced with a situation, depending on the story we're telling ourselves about it, look at me and my divorce. I figured the devil I knew was better than the unknown and the uncertainty. So I just didn't get divorced, didn't get divorced, didn't get divorced, didn't make it a priority, didn't get it done. 
when by the time we got it done, it was like a no brainer. It was a no big deal. Hey, here's my assets. Here's your assets. Here's our assets together. Split them in half, you know, boom, there we go. Sell the house, you know, sell the businesses, whatever. And, and it was actually much easier than I had ever anticipated because I didn't have in my mind the story that I was telling myself about the situation so it was going to be long and drawn out it was going to be a fight and a battle and that it was going to be miserable so who wants to hop into doing something miserable uh, nobody nobody I know not me for sure so I wasn't considering all the possibilities and all the options I was boxing myself into by my limited beliefs that it was going to be terrible so I would already decided before I even started is really an interesting way to procrastinate uh, how it was going to play out and guess what how we imagine things are going to play out is exactly how they play out we can cr help influence and create that so what's my story what's the situation what are the possible options oh for soap options possibilities choices solutions and then nothing happens in any of our lives unless we take action we have to do something so the story is, is looking for facts and information. Options are exploring the possibilities. Action is picking one of those and actually taking a step toward what we want, toward resolution, toward the solution that we think will solve the change or the challenge that we're facing. And finally, the P is for progress. We need to look at, and we're always looking for progress, moving, going in the direction that we want to go, moving toward our goals. So P stands for progress. So story or situation, Options, action, progress are the steps of our framework. And it's interesting, a long time ago, and I'll talk about this as well, I learned a framework called Plan, Do, Check, Act when I was in college, and I used that throughout my entire corporate career, and I still catch myself doing it today. When I'm doing anything, I follow the framework of answering the questions, Plan, Do, Check, Act, those steps, because I learned that framework. And that's part of why I knew I needed to describe what we do to, to guarantee we get the results we want after a change or challenge in a, a short, concise, this is how I actually do it framework. So that even if you don't remember story, options, action, progress, if you think of soap, it will trigger your memory and help you remember soap. We all are using soap a lot. My hands went to the nail salon and the lady's like, your hands are ridiculously dry. Well, we got a new baby in the household, so I'm washing my hands. And even with COVID, I was washing my hands all the time. In the food industry, I was washing my hands all the time. So my hands are just perpetually, like, dry. I hate that. But I, I put oil on them last night, like she recommended, and I'll continue to do so. But we need a framework to, to assess things quickly by, to install in our subconscious so it becomes automatic. I don't think now, whenever I'm faced with a change or challenge, unless I'm doing the get up and go challenge, I do not automatic, I don't out loud think and write down the story, the options, the actions, and the progress. But for the purpose of this challenge, we're going to do that. We're going to go through, and our action item today is just to pick one of the seven areas. Where is my little amazing graphic, which I did write backwards? We're going to pick which of these seven areas and share in the comments below. Which area do you want me to do an example on? And we're going to walk through a specific example. And I'll probably use one from my life or maybe one of my, my clients or customers. But I usually use one from my life because I've got the most information about that. And I'll go through either a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships or contribution example in my life of applying the story framework. And this is when I get the chance to actually think about and consider on a conscious level and write it down, which I have got to admit has made uh, 2020 and 2021 years that I couldn't even have imagined with respect to personal progress and growth and personal development, because I am taking the time to consider and write down all of the aspects of the choices and the challenges that I'm facing. And that's making me and force me to look for more options, to focus more on solutions, to take action and then loop back through and see, did that action move me in the direction I want to go or did it not? Because guess what? Some stuff we do works. Some actions we take are really, really successful and move us, you know, move the needle a long way toward what we want. Others, we don't know right away when we start doing something. That's why we create morning routines and rituals and habits to move us toward on a continuous basis what we want. And we'll talk about all that throughout the challenge. So today, I just wanted to give you a brief overview of the challenge. You don't have to really do anything about that, but you can think about it. You can think about, hmm, 
do I follow pretty much those four steps when I am faced with a change or challenge? Or maybe you, you spend all your time in the story and situation and that's how you procrastinate and you never get to the options because like me, you're afraid that there's only one or two options. And so you stay stuck in story. But until you move on to the options and think about, well, what, what could happen? What could I do? What else is possible? How could this change? You'll never take any action. And if you never take any action, you'll stay stuck there spinning your wheels and you won't make any progress. And we all want to make progress to make our lives possible. So any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, just share physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial relationships or contribution. And we'll pick that. And tomorrow we will dive right in to the S, the story or the situation about whatever category you pick. And I'll pick an example of my life. I got something going on in each area of those of, of my life all the time. So it's pretty easy to pull an example. And for physical, I'm starting a new thing. So it's a good, it's a good one as well. So share in the comments below and I'll of course be with you tomorrow. Bye. Get some soap.